Hey there, it's Sunday morning and um, I just released the video I'm making this thing right here, which is a small parts organizer, but made from cardboard. <laughs> you know, every time I make something with wood lately, uh, you get people complaining about the price of wood. So I thought, you know, this is a, a good solution right here. Actually, this was on my list of, uh, of potential projects for some time. And that was to make something useful out of cardboard. And um, I couldn't think of any, I couldn't think of anything other than this that would, um, that would do as well. Uh, because traditionally I've made, I think four uh, small parts organizers and they've all done relatively well. Uh, the first one I made got over a, a million views. I think it's closing in on 2 million views at this point. And the other ones are, are um, better than my typical uh, performance. So I don't know how well this will do. Maybe it'll do okay. Uh, we'll see. But it was interesting uh, to do. And I could have been more fancy with it. But I didn't want to spend, you know, a week building it either. I'm going to use this. This is going to go in my basement in my utility room down there. And it has fasteners in there that I'll occasionally use in the house. Uh, and I would have to come out here to the workshop to get. So handy for that. Um, I originally was going to make one for my electronics room, which is not fully set up yet. But um, I've already got a lot of storage in that room uh, for small parts. And of course, electronics is all about small parts. And, and not to mention that I'm not sure how much of that I'm going to be doing in the future. So I thought it would be more handy to have one for, you know, odd fasteners, like different size screws, nuts, you know, stuff like that in the house where, like I said, you'd have to come out to the shop and dig around and you can look through this. 15 drawers made for all from cardboard, except for the uh, MDF bottom plate, which is just a scrap of three quarter end MDF. And it was lifted up a little bit to make it easier to open the bottom drawers and also add a little bit of weight because anything made from cardboard is not, not very heavy. You know, it's strong and I've already gotten comments, even though I, I said in the description of the video that I think that this is going to last for years and years and years because you're just opening the drawer you know, and you're getting something out. You're not like, unless you're taking it and throwing it on the floor or, or bringing it to wherever you are and you happen to spill coffee on it or something like that. It's not going to get a, a lot of abuse, right? You slide it out, you have a look, you slide it back in. Yeah, I may never touch this again for another three months. Okay. Even if you were to use it regularly, I think it's still hold up just fine. So yeah, interesting little project, I thought. And like I said, it was on my list of things to do. Moving on, in that video, I did a little promotion for the screwdriver sets that I have uh, for sale. It's a limited run, 200 sets. So if you're interested in it, there's a link in the description that will take you to the place where you can get it. So what else do I have going on? Well, I didn't make one of these last week. But last week I made this air cleaner that is up on my ceiling and it's made from a simple inline fan. It's a duck booster fan, although you can get bigger, more powerful ones and you know, you can, you can make it as fancy as you want and even have it standing on the floor or in the corner or something like that. I chose to put it up here because a while back I had the idea of, and this always pops into my head when I'm cutting something on a table saw because I don't have any, uh, dust collection on the table saw. It's passive. It drops to the floor. I sweep it up and away it goes. Uh, is that sometimes it depends on what you're cutting, how much you're cutting. Even though I turn on the air cleaner, the big one over there, um, a, a bit of a cloud forms above the table saw. And with this pointed, the exhaust from this pointed at the table saw where I'm standing, basically blowing in my face or just above my head, actually. It'll clear that dust out of there, making it so that 
even if I'm wearing masks, which I do usually when I'm making a lot of cuts, I'm, you know, not filtering the dirtiest air. I'm getting some clean air in the area where I'm standing. So that's the reason why it's up here. And also, like, this is a good place to put it. Ceilings are underutilized in a shop. Usually you got lighting up there and that's it. <laughs> you put this air cleaner. And I mean, that's, you know, typical place to put one of the ones you buy. But this is a lot cheaper and it seems to work well. I've only had it on. It's not on now because I've got it turned off. And it's on right now. And you can hear how loud it is. It's not really loud. So it doesn't bother me when I'm out here working. But I can turn it off if I'm recording a video like this and talking. But otherwise it stays on. It comes on when I turn on the light which is really good. So it's continually cleaning the air. It's not a high volume thing, but it does continue to clean the air. The filters are already starting to look a little bit brown, even with the little bit of cutting I did um, to, you know, do the stuff that I did here, cutting the MDF for the base, cutting the, uh, the things that I put down inside the drawers to clamp it. So not a lot of cutting, but you can see it on the filters already. The other thing that I was talking about before in previous videos on this channel was the dust collection situation up on this end wall. Um, originally, I was going to take that cyclone vac that I built and build a cabinet in the corner to put that in. Then I got the idea that to make it quieter, <laughs> I would vent it outdoors. So I went ahead and did that. I cut a hole through the wall and I put a, a dryer vent there and I got that all buttoned up. And then I got to thinking, why do I have it in the shop at all? It's taking up space in here. I can put it out of the shed. All I need to do is get a longer hose to come out, you know, back in here and run it through the hole that I already cut in the wall. And then I got to thinking about that a little bit more. And I realized that I have a smaller shop vac and it fits right underneath that uh, shelf where the tools are. So I said, why don't I use that instead of that bigger one to collect the dust from these tools? And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that set up in there. I'm going to still going to run the duct across like I talked about before in a previous video. It's just plywood duct that you know, picks up each tool and allows me to shut things off if I need to. And then the big dust collector, uh, if we can call it that, well, it's a cyclone. It is a dust collector. I'm going to put that right underneath the side wing of my table saw because it'll fit it under there neatly. And it will come on when I turn on the table saw and it will capture all of the fine dust that was clouding up around my head. Um, well, a lot of it. Anyway, it'll help. I had one hooked up before, but I took it away because it was a small one. It was just filling up way too quickly. So I, you know, basically had to turn it off until I found the time to dump it. And then, you know, the Cyclone has the big collection bin in the bottom, so it can run for a long time. Also, this shop vac that I'm putting underneath the bench over here has bag. I have bags for that. So I'll fill up the bag, <laughs> however long that takes. And I think it'll take a long time because it's just the sanders and the bandsaw and occasional cleaning up for the, for the um, what is that? CNC. So, yeah. I think that's the best solution overall.